Hi there, my name is Connie. I'm a CVT here at Dove Lewis, and today I am going to talk to you about HESCA fluid pump troubleshooting. So there's a bunch of different alarms that um, will scream at you throughout your day, and I'm going to go through the most common um, alarms that it will alert you to and how to troubleshoot those. So the first alarm I'm gonna go over is the air alarm, and here is a quick video of what that will look like. So what this uh, error means is that there is error present somewhere along the line. So that can mean that there is an occlusion either above the pump, um, at the door, below the pump, or at your patient. But really, all it really means is that this sensor in here is um, detecting a air bubble. So some reasons that that might happen is your fluid bag has run out and it has continued uh, to move through the line until air has happened. Um, it can be down the line here and so it builds up and creates an air bubble. So some troubleshooting um, ideas for when you're getting that air alarm is I just visually run my line to make sure that everything is unclamped, including down at my patient's T-port. If that isn't the reason, um, I will then actually clamp at my patient's T-port because the next thing I'm gonna do is open up my fluid pump door and once this is open um, there's nothing stopping the fluid from continuing down to my patient so i'm going to open that up i'm going to make sure this looks good and there aren't any big bubbles in there um, sometimes when the fluid line has been in there for a while and it gets pinched the uh, pump will see that pinch as a bubble so you can move your line through a little bit and then close it. If there are large bubbles um, in your line, you're going to have to disconnect from your patient and run those bubbles all the way through so they don't end up in your patient. Another reason that your HESCA pump might be giving you an air alarm is because you have the incorrect tubing um, in your HESCA pump. So it needs to be the right size, it needs to be um, for the HESCA pump for it to work correctly. So um, check the manufacturer um, information on the fluid lines that you're using to make sure they're compatible with the HESCA pump or whatever pump you're using and um, that it is in there correctly as well. And the last thing I check um, when trying to troubleshoot my air alarm is just to make sure, you know, this guy's just out on the table, but these lines can get pinched in the kennel doors as well, which can create pressure, which causes bubbles to show up in your pump. The next alarm I am gonna go over is the high pressure alarm. Um, again, quick video of what that looks like when it is alarming to you. What this means is that something is creating an occlusion either above or below your pump. So this can be that um, it is kinked on its way in here. So it's been not properly loaded and has kinked and is occluding there. Again, it can be that you have clamps open somewhere along the line. Um, make sure everything is open, make sure everything's unclamped. The, what this can also indicate though is that your catheter is um, either no longer patent or you have those cats usually that like to curl up in meatloaf and so they're occluding their catheter. Um, again, it can be the kennel door. 
It just means something is not allowing for the fluid to move through the pump and it is causing high pressure. And again, this can also happen if you have the wrong fluid line in your pump. So make sure that you again have the appropriate tubing for your Heska pump. Um, another reason that you might be getting a high pressure alarm is because the fluid rate you have chosen um, because you have macro or micro, so make sure that your settings on your HESCA pump are correct as well. There is another video that shows you how to change um, the HESCA pump from macro to micro and vice versa, so I'm not going to cover that here. The next alarm I'm going to cover is called the open vein alarm, so here is another quick video of what that looks like. What this means is that the volume to be infused has been reached. So when you set up your fluids, you tell it how much volume you want to go through. So say like 500 mils is how much we want to deliver to our patient. So that has been reached, but it doesn't want to just turn off because that may cause your IV catheter to become non-patent um, because it's not being flushed through any longer. So what that means is not to just press it to go again. Um, you need to make sure that um, you reset the volume to be infused again. Um, and so it will deliver um, the appropriate volume to your patient. Um, another reason um, that this alarm can go off is because the patient has become disconnected from the fluid line. Um, so that can happen either they didn't get reconnected after a walk or um, they didn't have their e-collar on, so they chewed through the line. Doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to go off, um, but it is one of the alarms that will, will run if they've become disconnected. Another alarm is the door open alarm. So here is a video of what that looks like. This one's pretty uh, straightforward. It means that your fluid pump door has not been closed appropriately before um, pressing start. And um, it can also mean it just, it may like appear closed, but it didn't do the click. So it wasn't all the way closed. Um, it can also indicate that your door is broken. So if it's not closing appropriately, um, there's a series of you know, springs and magnets in here. So if those become damaged, that might be the reason that you think you're closing it, but it's not closing all the way. So this alarm is the low battery alarm and what that looks like. So what this indicates is that your HESCA pump needs to be plugged in. So there is a um, spot there for the plug to go in, plug it into a power source. The low battery is telling you you have approximately 15 minutes left before your HESCA pump is going to just completely shut down. And then lastly, if you don't do that, um, this will <laughs> briefly alert you about a couple minutes before your pump completely dies and it is the end battery alarm. So you have minutes before it completely shuts down and is no longer um, delivering your fluid therapy to your patient. And those are the most um, common HESCA pump alarms and what you can do to troubleshoot them.